We're driving a 2023 Toyota GR Corolla Marizo Edition. Coming up, even though she's not here in the car with us right now, I'm going to show my daughter how a manual transmission works. But first, information explosion. On the off chance you don't know what a GR Corolla is, it's an all-wheel drive, extra fast version of the Corolla hatchback. The one we're driving is the Marizo Edition, which is extra racy, and they're only making 200 to sell in the US for 2023. So we're not gonna break it. Let's begin with interior. I tend to favor simplified interiors with simplified controls, and that seems extra important here because there's nothing to distract you from hauling. <laughs> you may notice that unlike every other video we do, it's just Evie and I this time, our daughter can't come with us because there are no back seats. In fact, you know, we're talking a lot about the Marizo Edition. Let's do a quick run through. Here's what makes it special. The Marizo Edition is about 100 pounds lighter than the circuit trim, and they do that by ditching the rear seats, the window gear, and uh, the rear wipers. It also has a close ratio manual transmission, shorter differential gears, forged wheels, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires, a unique track tune suspension, and extra so yeah, they've ditched some stuff and it costs more money and it's certainly the fastest version of GR Corolla you can buy. From a practicality standpoint though, the uh, strut tower brace creates almost like a little like cargo divider and then there's a lower brace that also works to keep your cargo in place. If you had this as a track day tool, there'd be so much room back there for spare tires. If you go with any other version of the GR Corolla besides the Marizo, then you get back seats. Behind the back seats, there are 17.8 cubic feet of cargo space, which is decent. And even though we don't have back seats in this one, I know from previous experience that rear occupant space is decent, but not exceptional. But I think because of the hatchback format and all the cargo space back there, you could delude yourself into thinking this is a practical purchase. <laughs> normally in our videos, I would ask my daughter now how easy it was to get in and out, but she's not here, so we're gonna skip it. Also, normally in our videos, I would ask my sweetie how it is getting a child seat installed, but there is no room for one, so we're gonna skip it. What we won't skip is safety. So the Toyota Corolla as a foundation is very, very safe. Five-star overall rating from the NHTSA. It's an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. 10 airbags come standard. It's got a full suite of active driver assist, lane keeping assist, automatic emergency braking with intersection intervention where if you're going to pull in front of a car, it can automatically apply the brakes. And it also has uh, dynamic cruise control. And when we did our video with the Subaru WRX, and I noted that you could not get at those active safety features in a manual equipped WRX. Some people were like, well, you can't do it with a manual. Oh, can't you? Sorry, I should go to a more fun gear. There <laughs> we go. What do you think, sweetie? Is this car family friendly? No. No, but if you went for uh, the circuit edition or maybe the base core trim uh, and you have some rear seats back there, it could be potentially family friendly, small family friendly maybe. Rear window test is another thing we're not going to do because literally you cannot roll down the rear windows in this version. They've removed the uh, window regulators and the switches. Though you do get a cool little carbon fiber cover back there. Cool. Armrest test. Huh. Okay, so there's no armrest. I'm just gonna go 0% there. And then the outboard, there is an armrest here. Not super hard, but not super soft. I'm gonna go 65% outboard. Hey, would you like to see more videos like this? I'm actually kind of not really like this. <laughs> Normally we review cars as a family. That means she, me, and our daughter. But uh, you know, this kind of thing. Or the occasional helicopter adventure. If so, feel free to subscribe. Style. The things that distinguish the GR Corolla from a standard Corolla are wider front and rear fenders, all the functional intakes and vents. If you approach it straight on, you're like, there's something a little off about that. There's the vents on the hood, but it looks sort of like a Corolla. Uh -huh. But as you come around, you start to wonder, what the f is going on with this Corolla? Huh? And then you what? go to the back and you see the triple exhaust. It has three cylinders, so it kind of makes sense thematically versus, let's say, the Honda Civic 
Type R, which has three exhaust outlets, but has four cylinders, though we are very much looking forward to driving that Type R. Having driven a fair number of uh, high performance exotic cars over the years, I really like the kind of understated cool of taking something like a Corolla, which is a very pedestrian kind of car, and making it badass. Last note, the one we have here is painted with the smoke paint option, which is a little more than $1,600. It's a matte paint, and it's exclusive to the Murizo edition. What do you guys think? Does the GR Corolla look good to you? If so, if no, tell us in the comment section. Onward to In Motion. The ride is very stiff. Though it is stiff, it is not painfully stiff. We're running on summer tires here. There's a ton of grip, and I love the steering because on center, it's not needlessly reactive, and that's the kind of stability you'd really want if you're going fast in a straight line. But as soon as you come a little bit off, there's just this immediacy. Everything is, is really prompt. I'm gonna do a little U-turn here and go back up the other direction and drive quickly. You'll notice too, by the way, that I'm using my left hand to put it into reverse. I did break my hand not too long ago. Um, I'm really glad I'm out of a cast now so I can uh, drive this rare manual transmission car. Don't expect any e-brake pulls. Unless I'm driving, of course. Sweetie's gonna get gnarly. <laughs> There are cars that are very fast that aren't that fun, and there are cars that are very fun that aren't that fast. This is a bit of both, and I find it very engaging. Oh, we have got to talk about the powertrain. So we've got three cylinders of fury here. That doesn't sound like enough cylinders. Years ago, I drove a Mitsubishi Mirage, also a three-cylinder. Absolute crap box, but it sounded kind of mean. It was cool sounding. And so uh, I'm just going to start flooring it. First item to notice there, floor it delay as the turbo starts to spool up and then the power comes in. So it definitely feels like a turbocharged car, but I'm gonna chalk that up to the character and take that as my cue just to keep it on boost. And we got just a little bit of a straightaway here, so I'm gonna come bring it to a standing start and uh, see how it feels. There's actually some disagreement about the zero to 60 time. On the press side, it says around five seconds. On the, on the uh, consumer side, it says around 5.4. Whatever it is, let's see how it feels. I would say it's fast enough for a lot of fun, but EVs are really changing my perception on what, what quick feels like. It sounds so ominous if you fear speed. Do you fear speed? <laughs> Connect with my wife and leave a comment in the comments. Regarding the manual transmission, uh, relatively nice short throws, maybe um, a little bit more effort going into gears than I prefer, but I did just break my hand, so that might be affecting my perception. I do like the fact that we've got uh, the IMT function, which automatically revs the engine to match the downshift you go for, so when you're going from third to second, it'll automatically match the revs, which is good because where the pedals are positioned makes it very difficult for me to perform heel-toe downshifts. And if you don't know what a heel-toe downshift is, click up here. Another really fun aspect of the GR Corolla is that you can change the torque split. Standard is 60 front, 40 rear, but if you rotate here with this knob, then it puts 70% uh, of the power to the rear, which is a more sporting way to drive, and I think maybe we should do that right now. There we go. Fun, fun. There's also, a uh, if you put it in track mode, you can do a 50-50 split, which makes it a little bit more stable if you're really serious about lapping. And then you've also got some drive modes, normal, sport, custom, and sweetie's favorite mode. Eco mode. Yay! I'm gonna brake really hard, sweetie. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one, brake hard. Dang. The thing brakes really nicely. The pedal feels awesome, good, firm feel, easy to modulate. I'll be honest, guys, I really like driving the GR Corolla, but what does Sweetie think? Okay, I know you don't like to drive fast, so the premise of this section is, can somebody who doesn't care to drive fast still comfortably drive a GR Corolla? I actually like the way the steering feels. I think I would rather have a more responsive steering system that's a little heavier because of where we drive generally. You feel like you can dodge the rocks and stuff, all the debris that winds up on our mountain roads? Yeah, I like it. I'm curious, how do you find the ride quality? Because it is, it is very firm. If this was your choice, I would happily support this choice. Oh. I keep thinking I need to shift. I have seen you go for like 12 <laughs> shifts and not actually shift so far. Oh, and I always ask this, but when you're comfortable, tell me, how's visibility in the GR Corolla? It's fine over my right shoulder, but over my left shoulder, I'm positioned rather far forward to reach that clutch, so the B pillar's right in my way. A common problem for um, Evie, who tends to drive a little bit shorter, is having that B pillar block. But overall, 
You're finding this thing to be pretty manageable? Totally. Do me one more thing. Go through this corner slightly quicker than you would expect to go through and see how it feels. Ah. Let me know if you're having any fun. Faster, faster, faster. Oh, God. Faster, faster, <laughs> no, faster. No, not fun. There we go. <laughs> I can see how somebody without my brain would find that very fun. Oh good, so if you don't have Evie's brain, which is literally everyone, you'll have fun in the GR Corolla. I'm getting back in the driver's seat. In total, the GR Corolla it has a ton of fun potential if you're willing to exploit it. Last thought, what really jumps out to me about the Corolla is how solid it feels, and it really should. They've got extra floor braces, you've got the extra rear struts tower brace, there's an extra 349 spot welds throughout to uh, further solidify the chassis, and there's an extra six meters of structural adhesive. Very solid. <laughs> Oh, and as promised in the beginning of the video, let me briefly introduce my daughter to what a manual transmission is all about. Kiddo, you got moved up to the front seat. What a rare opportunity. How's it feel sitting in front? Feels kind of cool. I can see out really good. And before you ask, in California, if a car has no rear seats, it's okay for a child under eight to sit in the front. Do you know what this is, kiddo? A gear selector? It is a gear selector. Almost every car we drive has what's called an automatic transmission, which means you just drive and it figures it out. But this one, you do manually. Do you see the numbers on here? One. What number is that? Six. How many gears do you think this thing has? Six. That's exactly right. Okay, real quick, I want to show you why we have a manual transmission in different gears. Now listen. That sounds really loud. It's so loud, and that's as fast as we can go with the first gear. Would it be fun to have a car that could only go that fast? No, no it wouldn't be because we wouldn't be able to drive on the freeway. So when we're starting off, we start off in first gear and then when we're driving on the freeway, we might be in sixth gear. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the way the gears work, if you push to the left, that's one and two. If you leave it in the middle, that's three and four. And then if you push to the right, that's five and six. Here, you put your hand on there and I'm gonna help you shift. Okay, ready? We're gonna start off in first. Ugh. Okay, ready? Here's the first gear. And then, once the engine starts revving up a little bit, we put the clutch in, and then we go to second. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna give you an easy one. So you're gonna put it in third gear for me when I say. That's gonna be in the middle and forward, okay? okay. Three, two, one, go! Uh. Push forward. There you go, all the way forward. Third gear, you did it! Your first gear shift. And now we're gonna go to fourth. Pull it all the way back, go. Fourth gear. Not only do you have to move this, but you have to use your foot. You see down there, I've got a clutch pedal. So when the clutch is out, the engine is connected to the transmission. When I push the clutch in, the engine is not connected to the transmission, so we don't go anywhere. That's called a manual transmission. And, and kiddo, mm -hmm. by the time you're old enough to drive, that probably won't exist anymore. I know, right? That's my reaction. Okay, last thing. Should we take this thing a little bit quickly? You wanna see how fast this goes? Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna show you how fast it goes, but I will go a little bit quick, okay? Here we go. Whee. This car is fun. This car is fun. Should we tell mommy that we're getting this car for our next car? I agree. All right, I think we've had some fun and we learned a little bit about a manual transmission. Thank you for joining me up front. I got an idea, let's do a high five and that'll get me back into the normal review. Ready, set, go. Yes, that's my version of good parenting. Moving on to emotion factor. I think what's fun about this is you kind of get to have it both ways. You get to have the emotion of smugness for making a sensible choice like a Corolla, uh -huh. but also the emotion of having a lot of fun with your Corolla. What's cool about the GR Corolla is it's very, very capable in a track environment. To show you that Toyota really wants you to take your GR Corolla to the track, they include a one-year membership to the National Autosport Association and one free track day. That's awesome. What do you guys think? Are you emotionally drawn to buy a GR Corolla of your very own? If you do want a GR Corolla, you might need to sell your current car first. If you do, click the link in the description below to Kelly Blue Book, and they'll give you all the pricing information on what your current car is worth or what you should pay for your GR Corolla. Onward to remarks. Infotainment. We've got a standard eight inch screen. It includes over the air updates, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And there's also the Hey Toyota function. What do you want to do? I want to have fun in my Gia Corolla. I'm having trouble understanding you. See, uh, Hey Toyota's not down for a good time. Any issues? I didn't have any issues other than the icons are a little small and my eyes 
eyes are a little bad. Well, perhaps it's time to update your prescription in your flying eye sunglasses. Sweetie, really quick, tell them why you wear flying eyes. I wear flying eyes not because I'm doing awesome stuff like flying in a helicopter, although it helps with being a passenger too. I wear them because they're so comfortable. They are made of a very strong material called resilamite, which means they can be super lightweight and super strong. I wear them as my everyday glasses and they come with removable magnetic tinted lenses so they double as sunglasses. If you'd appreciate aviation grade eyewear, whether you're being terrified in the right seat of a GR Corolla or you're flying in a helicopter or an airplane, click the link in the description below and use the promo code MICA to save 10% on flying eyes needles full throttle acceleration. Whee! Over here in front of the driver, there's a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. It gives you a ton of useful information. In a lot of cars, the digital gauge cluster is a novelty, but in this case, it's genuinely useful. Sweetie. Yes. Can I give you a trim recommendation? Sure. Normally, I would recommend the base $36,000 core trim. It has plenty of fun and includes all the essentials like a robust safety suite and smart key access, but it has open front and rear differential standard. Given the GR's rally potential, I think it'd be crazy not to get the limited slip front and rear differentials. That comes with the performance package for about $1,200. If you add that to the base price, you're already at about thirty-seven dollars To my mind, the GR Corolla isn't just transportation, it's special. I'd suggest committing to that specialist by springing for the $42,900 Circuit Edition. That adds embedded navigation, JBL audio, those limited slip differentials, heated ultra suede synth leather sport seats, a forged carbon fiber roof, hood bulges with black air vents, and the ever so important red brake calipers. There's only one engine, it's a 1.6 liter inline three cylinder turbo. Here's how much it makes in the standard GR Corollas, and then here's how much it makes in the Marizo Edition. I think the Marizo Edition is very cool, but it's so rare that I think buyers might hesitate to actually take it out on the track and really like wail on the thing. So for me, I think the Circuit Edition is the sweet spot in terms of price. It also has rear seats so you can like bring your daughter along. As for the competitors, we got names like the Volkswagen Golf R, there's the Honda Civic Type R, and then a cheaper alternative would be the Hyundai Elantra N. And I drove that thing at uh, Sonoma Raceway, and that is a lot of fun for a lot less money. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis. In thinking about the essence of the Toyota GR Corolla, it kicks in defiance of expectations. To me, it is the John Travolta in Pulp Fiction of small performance cars. The guy from Look Who's Talking and Saturday Night Fever, he's the assassin? Are you sure? <laughs> Apparently, we only reference movies from the 90s. It's a classic, sweetie. I stand by that synopsis. I think we've done a good job reviewing the Toyota GR Corolla. May I have a five? Gentle. Ding. Broke the hand. And you, come get your high five. Ah. Quadcopter caught in a tree. It's really tall. And so I called a tree trimming service to see if maybe they could get my uh, quadcopter out. I also came out back to the tree in the hope that the wind would blow it down. Yeah! <laughs> I'm tearing up. It's not the cold air. It's, it's, I'm so happy.